Right, on today's uh, lesson onwards, we'll be starting the unit two. I hope all of you have got the uh, printed copy of the study pack six, which is energetics. That's the first uh, unit of the unit six. So in this chapter, we'll be studying about the energy associated in during a chemical reaction, the energy required to break the bonds and make the bonds. We'll be studying how, what is enthalpy and uh, what is, uh, what's the meaning of enthalpy change and what are exothermic and endothermic reactions and how to draw energy profile diagrams and how to find the entire change of a reaction. And at the end, we'll be studying about the uh, uh, Hess's law, application of Hess's law. Now, if you have a basic chemical reaction, uh, say for example, uh, methane reacting with oxygen uh, to form carbon dioxide plus water, right? Uh, this reaction, what happens is that you have four carbon hydrogen bonds and one oxygen oxygen double bond in fact it should be two oxygen oxygen double bonds and you balance the equation and carbon oxygen double bond this is the uh, the displayed formula of the reactants and the products so what happens during this chemical reaction like any other chemical reaction we know a chemical reaction is a bond breaking and a bond making process any chemical reaction is a bond breaking and a bond making process at the reactants the bonds are broken and the atoms rearrange and form new bonds at the products that means the four carbon hydrogen bonds break here and the oxygen oxygen double bond break and the carbon forms a new bond uh, with the oxygen and the hydrogen forms a new bond with the oxygen so any chemical reaction uh, is a bond breaking and a bond making process. So energy should be uh, supplied uh, to break the bonds, right? And for example, anything to break, you have to supply energy. So you want to break uh, your pen, you have to supply energy, right? So likewise, bond breaking, you should supply energy. And likewise, when the bond is made, it's the opposite of breaking, is making, energy is released. So during this bond breaking and the bond making process in any chemical reaction, energy is absorbed as well as released. Now the thing is, the energy absorbed to break the bonds will not be the same as energy released when the bonds are made. The reason is that you break different bonds, you're making different bonds. Each bond energy is different. Carbon hydrogen energy required to break the carbon hydrogen bond is different to the energy required to break the oxygen oxygen double bond. Likewise, energy release when the carbon oxygen double bond is made is different to the energy release when the hydrogen oxygen double bond is made. So, in short, these reactants and products have a certain amount of energy, have a certain amount of energy within it. As reactants and the products have a certain amount of energy within it and that energy is what we call as enthalpy which is denoted by capital H. So enthalpy is the scientific term for the energy within a system. Now I know all of you have done enthalpy and you know what is exothermic and endothermic reaction. All, all this is done for levels but still I'm start any subject any chapter in a levels because i want to make sure that your foundation is strong right so enthalpy the term enthalpy means that's a scientific term for the energy within a system so these reactants has a certain amount of energy in terms of bond energy and that's referred to as the enthalpy of the reactants hr and these products have a certain amount of energy in terms of bond energy and that's referred to as the enthalpy of the products denoted by hp Right. So the difference of these enthalpies of reactants and the enthalpy of the products will never be the same. The type of bond which you make is the same which you make. Right. The energy released when the bonds are made is not the same as energy required. The bond is breaking different bonds and making so there will be always a different difference. It will never be the same. There will be always a difference between the enthalpy of the reactants 
and the entire the but is what we Is my voice clear now? It's lagging. Okay, got disconnected. Is it clear now? Can you hear me clearly? Okay, so there is a certain amount of energy within the reactants and the products, energy required to. So there's a certain amount of energy within the system that the reactants that's known as the entalpy of the reactants and the certain amount of energy within the products is called the entalpy of the products and they are never the same why they are never the same because energy the bonds which you break is not the same as the bonds which you make each bond has a different amount of energy single bond different energy double bond different energy ch bond different energy o c o bond different energy so the energy difference we call this energy as entalpy because that's the energy within a system. This energy difference is denoted by delta H, which means entalpy change. The entalpy change is defined as the difference between the entalpy of the products and the reactants. That is entalpy of the products HP minus HR is what we call as the entalpy change. Right? So any system has a certain amount of energy within it. That's called the entalpy. And the units of entalpy will be in kilojoules or mole. So energy change is known as the entalpy change uh, in a system that's delta H, it's HP minus HR. Now, certain reactions are there. The energy, I said, to break bonds, you have to supply energy. When the bonds are made, energy is released. So some reactions, the energy which is given out is more than the energy which is absorbed when the bonds are broken. So such reaction is referred to as exothermic reaction, exo, exit, thermic, thermal energy, heat energy, right? A reaction which gives out heat to the surroundings is known as exothermic reaction. So you have a system here and you've got the surroundings. Now what is called the system is the reactants and products are referred to as the system here right and this is the surroundings other than the reactors and the products of the surroundings so in exothermic reaction the system gives out heat to the surroundings as a result the temperature of the surrounding rises now when i put a thermometer inside the system right what happens the temperature rises now the, you might ask me how come when the system gives the heat to the surrounding, surrounding temperature should rise. The thing is, we don't have any instrument to measure the system temperature. The thermometer can be used to measure the surrounding temperature. Even if you put inside the system, what it measures is the surrounding temperature because system temperature is the energy of the reactors and the products. You can't measure that using a thermometer. Right? So, Exothermic reactions, you see, it's bigger. the reaction vessel become more warmer. So in exothermic reaction, all these reactants have more energy compared to the products. Because when the reactants have more energy compared to the products, that's the reason why the reactants gives out heat as it forms the products in exothermic reaction. Because it has more energy. When you have more, you give, right? You give and become it forms stable products so in exothermic reaction the energy of the reactants are more than the energy of the products so in the h delta h equation which is hp minus hr so the entalpy of the reactants are greater hr is greater so when the hr is greater than hp delta h becomes negative delta h turns to be negative because entalpy of the reactant reactants are greater than the entalpy of the products, right? So there are so many examples for exothermic reactions. 
all the combustion reactions are exothermic. All combustion. What is combustion? That's a scientific term for burning. All combustion reactions are exothermic. Right? So you can write the first example. All combustion reactions are exothermic. All combustion reactions are exothermic. Another example you can say the reaction of hydrogen. Reaction of hydrogen with nitrogen. Reaction of hydrogen with nitrogen. To form ammonia. To form ammonia. It's not an example of exothermic reaction. The third example, reaction of sulfur with, with oxygen. Of course, that that's comes under the, again, uh, the combustion reaction, burning reaction with oxygen. Anyway, it's okay. Reaction of sulfur with oxygen. To form sulfur dioxide. Okay. Right. So let's see um, the energy profile diagrams. I hope you remember the energy profile diagram, which you had done before. Uh, for all levels, you have drawn it. Energy profile diagram is a diagram which helps to represent the energy difference of the reactants and the, and the products. Right. So this energy level diagram, also referred to as entirety level diagram or energy profile. Right, energy level diagram is referred to as enthalpy level uh, diagram or the energy profile. Right, the energy level diagram always the x axis is the reaction path, this is how you write in short reaction path, and the y axis is the energy, or you can even say as enthalpy. So, reactants are above and the products are below in exothermic reaction. Delta H will be negative, right? So earlier I explained uh, delta H will take a negative value because delta H is HP minus HR because HR uh, is greater than the HP. So therefore, delta H will take a negative value, right? So copy the energy profile diagram. So the opposite to the exothermic uh, reactions are the endothermic reaction. Endo, endo means taking in, heat is taken in. That means system absorbs heat from the surroundings. System absorbs heat from the surroundings. So as a result, what happens when you check the temperature, it will decrease because you always check the surrounding temperature. There's no instrument to check the, or measure the system temperature. So when you check the temperature, the temperature will be dropped, dropping. It will be dropping, right? So all this, the reactants taking heat, right? Reactants taking heat to form the products. That means reactants have, uh, reactants have less energy 
That is why it takes energy from the sur surroundings. So reactants, energy is less, the product's energy is greater. Because anything having less energy, that is why it absorbs the heat, right? When you have less energy, it absorbs heat. When you have more energy, when the reactants have more energy, it gives out the heat. When the reactants have less energy, it absorbs heat. In exothermic reaction, the reactants have more energy. That's why it gives out the heat. In the thermic reaction, reactants have low energy. That's why it absorbs the heat. So as for the delta H, which is HP minus HR, HP is greater. Because reactants have low energy, it absorbs heat from the surroundings and forms the product. So HP is greater than the HR, so therefore delta H will be positive. Let's find some examples for endothermic reactions. Uh, endothermic reactions, temperature drops. So the reaction vessel, when you hold, it will become much cooler, right? So the examples, you can say, just write three examples. The first example, reaction of urea with water. Uh, there's a question uh, before that, what, uh, when we put a thermometer for endothermic, what happens? Temperature drops, temperature drops, because system absorbs heat from the surroundings as a result of temperature drops. So room temperature is 25, endothermic reaction will be 20, 15, likewise it will keep decreasing. There won't be a curve reactance of products that I will not explain. That is, the curve is for the activation energy that comes later. You can write the three uh, examples. The first one, reaction of uh, urea with water. Reaction of urea with water. Uh, second, uh, second example, decomposition. Decomposition meaning breaking down. Breaking down of a substance referred to as decomposition. Decomposition of ammonia to nitrogen and hydrogen. Decomposition of ammonia to nitrogen and hydrogen. The third example, dissolving of potassium nitrate in water. Third example, dissolving of potassium nitrate in water. Dissolving of potassium nitrate in water. Just three examples sufficient. Right, uh, discussion, uh, what about liquid nitrogen? Liquid nitrogen is liquid nitrogen uh, because these endothermic exothermic reactions uh, terms are used for chemical reactions, not for substances. There's nothing called endothermic substance or exothermic substance, there's nothing like that, right? Uh, because it is used for the energy change which occurs during a chemical reaction, right? If there is no chemical reaction, we don't call it as endothermic. Just because it's cold or warm, we can't say it's endothermic, exothermic, because certain substances in nature is hot, some are cold. So it doesn't mean it's exothermic or endothermic process, right? This is used for the chemical reaction. The chemical reaction should take place. So endothermic, exothermic process is, terms are used for chemical reactions. That means reactants, Bonds broken, atoms rearrange and form new bonds. A right? completely different product should be formed. Right? So energy profile diagram for endothermic. Uh, 